What's happening guys and welcome to Beard Manners. Today we're going to be talking about beard butter. So, what is beard butter and why is beard butter? It's safe to say that beard butter is still one of the slightly newer products to the beard care range. A lot of people by now are using it and know exactly what it's for. Some people haven't yet really delved into it too much. It's one of the most talked about comment uh, products I have in the store. There's still people that ask, like beginners particularly, people that are new to the journey ask about everything. Um, and you know, in short, I've answered a lot of questions about most products in the videos. But because butter's so new, I want to spend a bit more time on it and what it's there for and what its benefits are. So most people by now understand oil is there to help hydrate the beard, but mainly for the skin. Um, oil is great for the skin. It's great for the beard as well. You can use it however you like. Everyone knows by now that I'm a big, I'm a fond believer of getting oil into the skin itself and using the other products for the beard, just because of how thin soaking. But you know, oil's there to hydrate, nourish, and protect. Balms there to help give that a little bit of extra hold and to also give some extra goodness to the beard. Because again, it's about helping soak it. Now butter for me, a good butter, a butter that's made well, should really give benefits similar to that of a leave-in conditioner. Because us guys, a lot of us guys are new to grooming, this confuses a lot of men that come into the shop. A lot of people say, well do I put it in while I'm washing, after I'm washing. It's an after wash product. I would apply any beard care personally to a dry beard. Oils, waxes, butters, none of these things mix well with water. So I would always say whatever you're putting into your beard, other than wash of course, put it into a dry beard. And beard butter is exactly the same. Some people would use beard butter as more of an evening range because of the leave-in conditioner aspects to it. And, and what that leave-in does is, I think, I personally feel that beard butters are the best overall care for your beard. They just soak in so much better than anything else does. They soak in slower but with with more conviction so to speak uh, something i say in all my videos about the oils you put oil to the beard every time you touch your beard you get that oily residue you don't tend to get it with butters obviously if you touch your beard minutes after putting butter into it you're, you're going to experience that that sort of buttery oily feeling it's what the products are it's the nature of them you can't avoid that i also find butters don't leave the stains on t-shirts as much as oil does this is another reason i think get oil to the skin and not to the beard because as i always say it soaks into the skin quicker it doesn't with the beard we've all got hoodies with stains around jumpers with stains around we struggle wearing white t-shirts because they start to lose their color this is because the oil is rubbing off you don't get that as much with a butter now the other thing that can confuse butters is there is just so many different variants i mean i'd be I'd be inclined to say that if you were to buy beard butters from every brand that does them, put them all up against each other, you'll struggle to find the same one twice. Now, is that a bad thing? Of, of course it's not, because it's all about what you prefer, what your beard prefers. It's like anything in life, it's the variety of choice. Something I say to most people is it's about the ingredients. You know, if in doubt, check the ingredients, see what's in the product. If you can, delve even deeper and to see what quantities of ingredients. You know, we could all do a product that's got something like argan oil in, or sea fawn, something that's quite expensive, and then have a second oil of sweet almond, which is very cheap. You know, if you want to look for a balance, in most cases, and this isn't fail safe by any length of the imagination, in most cases, a clear watery oil or clear butter is gonna be less good for your beard so to speak and for the skin I find that darker colors normally say something and tell a story um, you know when it comes to um, different like cold pressed and things like that as well you, your colors can make a difference you know you can get butters that have been treated they've gone through a burning process same with beeswax so that they get that real nice white color so that when you produce the product it looks really nice and really attractive in the jar but when you go through this process of burning things, the slow burn process, they also, the products also lose a little bit of the quality. Um, this is all there for people to see as well. I'm not saying this to stir anything up. These are just things I've looked into before I've started it. You know, you'll see if our butter's there, sort of a goldy, yellowy colour. You, you know that nothing's, nothing's been tampered with. It's all fully natural. You can then get different processes such as poured versus whipped. 
a lot of people argue about this. Again, it's a preference thing. Um, whipped butters, what normally happens is the butter is put through a secondary process. Once it's all mixed together, as it's starting to set, it goes through various different whipping stages. Again, depending on the ingredients that people use, depending on the cooling process, depending on the whipping process, you can get fitter but thicker butters that are whipped thinner. You know, um, some people like whipped because it leaves a lighter feel in the beard because it is literally, as it says, it's quite airy, it's quite, it rubs down very easily. Some people prefer the poured butters, which is what we do at Beard Manners. Um, what I like about the poured butters is there could be an argument made for if everyone uses the exact same product pound for pound, you're probably getting slightly more goodness. But they can also leave a slightly heavier feel in the beard. Um, I mean, I've got a thick, dense beard and it works completely fine for me. I've always preferred poured butters. Um, but again, it's a preference. If someone was to come in here and say, look, I've tried your butters, I'm not a fan, I prefer ripped whipped I'm not going to sit there and say well that's wrong your beard's going to suffer you know it, it's personal preference so there's lots of differences in that sense as well now the other thing with the butters is people often ask about hold there are what some people would call thicker butters um, you know I, I would say that a butter shouldn't have beeswax there's not a legality to that it's just a preference thing I think if it's got beeswax to give it extra hold then in my opinion it's a farm Whereas, you know, why I don't like having beeswax in a butter is because beeswax can affect how things soak in. The whole purpose of the beeswax is it's what makes the farms hard and solidify, almost like a candle. They, take, they should be harder to rub down than a butter is. And what they should do is start to dry far quicker. And that's what allows to give the beard a little bit of hold as that wax starts to set. It won't leave a solid feel to your beard at all, at least it shouldn't do. But it, it's the way it soaks into those hairs, it'll get to a point where it'll almost stop and it'll give that little bit of hold until it all just wears in. Whereas with a butter, it's just going to continually soak in a nice, consistent level. So, regarding the hold questions that I often get with butters, butters, whipped, I would imagine, don't offer really much hold at all. But again, I don't do whipped, you'd have to speak to a company that does, but in the process of it, I can't imagine how a light, fluffy product is going to give any form of a hold whatsoever. If you were to put squirty cream in your beard, it would make it feel sticky, but it wouldn't give it any hold. Um, poured butters can tend to offer a tiny bit, but the most honest I would be is if you're wanting a butter for hold, don't bother with a butter. You know, if you want something for hold, balm is always going to be better than a butter is for hold. Poured butters do offer a little bit. I've got butter in now, I haven't got any balm in at the moment. Um, I got up this morning, done my school runs, I put butter in around 7.30, 7.45am, something like that, and you know, my beard's looking fine. My, my typical daily routine is, depending on how my beard is being, how stubborn it's being, how behaved it is, I will usually oil and then potentially balm in the morning, just because I want my beard to stay well behaved-ish all day. My beard's quite wild and does what it wants. Um, if I'm having what I would call a good beard day, then I'd use butter instead. If my beard's maybe not quite feeling its best, I would sacrifice the whole of the balm and I'd use the butter because again, I do honestly believe that the butter offers more for your beard than the balm does in way of health. And then in an evening, I will always use the butter. If I'm doing a weekend at home and I'm not going out and about, if I don't need my beard to be tamed, it's always butter. So basically balm for me is a product I'd use if I need to use it. If I don't need the whole of the balm, I will always use the butters. So the next thing is how to apply butter and how much to put on. The most honest I can be is this is all going to come down to yet again that sentence of personal preference, your own beard and, and what you're wanting to get from it and how healthy your beard is. I'm a big believer in use left and not, less than often. I see a lot of videos, particularly the sort of um, short videos of people getting massive scoops of this stuff, getting absolutely loads of it, smirking, smiling, nodding their heads, having a way of the time and putting half a jar of butter into their beard. The way that butter soaks in, I mean, you can, of course, put too much in, but it soaks in differently to other things, so you can also put a lot of butter in a beard before it would become quite heavy. But with everything in life, I personally think the way forward is also, is always going to be less, but more often. It, everything is consistency. The guy that goes in the gym once a week and lifts insanely heavy weights is never going to be as fit, as durable, as strong, or look as aesthetic as the guy who goes in and lifts less every other day or every day. Um, I'm not going to get into a weights discussion now because again, that's completely about what you want to do. Um, I have been asked a lot by a lot of people to do some fitness videos. So I will do them at some stage, but 
again, I'm not a professional with fitness. It's, I'm not a personal trainer. It's just what's worked for me. But back to the butters. So yeah, so how much to how much to put in? So to start with, I'm going to show you one of our display butters. You're going to have to bear with me on the camera here because as you guys know, I always get this wrong. But you know how I mentioned to you how you get that sort of yellow consistency. I'll see if I can get to focus a little bit. There you go. So you can see how nice and smooth it literally looks like a butter. I want to get this in the way of my face so you can actually see it. There you go. So you can see how nice and clear that butter is. I'm going to now put one on to show you how much to use. I've got a bit on already, but you can see as you've used a few scoops, consistency of butter can change a lot as well, which I'll come to in a little while. But you can see if I can get the focus on that now. So you can see it scoops out well. So it's nothing like a balm, whereas a balm, depending on the style of balm, sometimes you can get a finger in and get it out quite tough. Sometimes you'll use a nail or a pick. It all depends again on the amount of wax in there. Butters are a far easier process. It's literally just the weight of my finger. And you can see I haven't got much on there. Now again, I've got a decent sized beard. Um, guys, for someone who's so bad at getting these positionings right, you'll have to see, having to suck it up a bit today, guys. But you can see, so there's not a huge amount on there. I like a reasonable amount of butter in my beard because my beard's quite thick and I like what it does to my beard. Now, you know, I always say with oil about I don't like the process of putting it into the hand because you rub it all in, it soaks in. This isn't I'm contradicting myself. Oil soaks into skin a lot quicker than this is going to. You'd have to really rub this down. Think of it like a body butter. You wouldn't put anywhere near that on your hands. The amount I just put on would be your, your arms, your chest, your face and everything. But what you want to do, you can see it's already starting to melt down a little bit, like a butter would. It's literally like getting a scoop of butter out of the fridge, putting it in the palm of your hand. You just need to give it a bit of a rub down lightly, literally a couple of seconds, and that has now spread around. You don't want it rubbing into the hands. From there is when you get it into your beard. And you want to get it absolutely everywhere. Get it inside your beard, get it underneath. Get it in your tash. And then as always, what I will do with oils, balms, butters, whatever it is, whatever excess there is, I just rub it into my arms, particularly into my tattoos, just because it's all good for your skin, it's all good for you, and it all helps. So you can see it doesn't need much, and you can see even straight away, we all know that I embrace the wild beard, but you can see it's literally just tidied it up that tiny bit. Um, it gives that element of hold for a little while, but it keeps it looking natural, and it's just giving that nice little shine to it. And this is what I love about butters, it just makes your beard feel so, so good. And it's why I like the poured butters. Again, this isn't about me dissing people that don't use poured butters, because it is a preference. This is why I personally like them. And that will just really just continue to soak in now throughout the day. I, ha I get it a lot in the shop, and this is no exaggeration. And it's people that come in here that are new to beard care that want to try stuff, when they first put butter on, I always, I'll always say try butter first. It's almost going to be like a shock for your beard. You can hear it, as they're starting to rub it in from the start, you can almost hear that crunchiness of a dry beard. We've all had dry beards before and we know what that is like. But as the butter's getting in there, while they're applying it, you can hear it go. And often when partners are in here, they're saying the same thing. I'll mention it to them and they'll be like, oh yeah, no, that's, that's right. You can hear it's starting to soften up as you're putting it in. And, you know, I, I, had a, I think I might have mentioned this in another video recently. I had an American gentleman come in, come in here a few months back who was quite new to summers and was a bit anti-UK stuff because of the scents, our scents compared to theirs. We can't, our scents can't be as strong as theirs because of the legalities of the mixes we have and upholding the CPSRs for those of us that do. Um, but he tried it anyway and he walked around. I didn't think he was going to come back in. He was only here as a flying visit. But he came back in about half an hour later with a beer from up the road and came in and bought a load of butters to take home with him because he was just amazed at how much better it made his beard feel. So that is what I like about them. Sticking with butters as well, one thing I will say is because they're quite a new product, not everyone knows this, you saw how easy they melt now. I'm sure that a lot of you guys have had balms that on a hot sunny day has melted down. Balm is far, far more consistent and dense than butter is. So you can imagine how easy it is for butter to rub down. You leave a butter in a car on a sunny day, you leave it by a windowsill in a lounge, you leave it in a cabinet where, there's the, where the light's shining on it, Butters melt down insanely easy. It's not a design flaw by us guys. Of all the companies out there that make this stuff, I'm sure they'll agree. There's just not a great deal we can do about it because it is just a mix of butters and oils. Uh, so they do melt down very, very easily. So from a storage point of view, as with all your beard care, try and keep it somewhere cool and dark as best as you can. 
you don't have to keep it in a fridge, you don't have to keep it that cool, but just keep it somewhere where it's not in front of direct sunlight. If the products do melt down completely, it's not the end of the world. Just put them into a fridge or a freezer, leave them in there for a few hours and they will start to set. What I would pre-warn is with whipped butters, they go through a very long process. The guys that do that, hats off to them, it is a very long process and it is, it is there for a reason because some people do prefer the lighter butters. That's never going to melt down the way it looks because what they have done is they've put it through a whipping process. When it melts down and you just let it reset, it's not going to melt the same as it was. So don't judge these guys that do the whipped butters if that happens because, again, they put it through a process and they then set it to send out to you. Poured butters, they'll melt down just the same and the same thing when you reset them, they'll melt back together. Sometimes what you might get is once the butter has melted down and been reset, because most of us guys, we've all got different methods and none of us ever share them, but we use different cooling techniques. I use free cooling techniques for my butters to get them where they do. So they do come through slightly varied. I know my customers would agree to this. They sometimes will come through slightly different because of the processes that they go through. Um, but sometimes when you melt one down or if one melts down by accident and you reset it, it can have a slightly grainy feel to it. It's not going to do it any harm whatsoever. It will still do the exact same thing as long as it rubs down in your hand afterwards and you get it all into your beard it's going to be completely fine so ignore how it feels ignore how it looks regardless of whether it's whipped poured heavy whatever it is that is just collateral damage of butters like i say the best way to avoid it is keep them somewhere safe dark and cool at all times um other than that as well is it's just a process something that not a lot of people do talk about in videos you'll see on most of our jars as well um again i'm not, I'm not sure i'm gonna get this they do have a little jar with a 12 m on them never going to focus now is it no I can't get this focus but you know that, that's to say 12 months is in they're good for 12 months if you've got products to go out of date they do of course lose a little bit of their quality you don't necessarily have to throw them away it's personal preference I've been in the past been known to use old products they just melt down the same they tend to feel a bit more waxy and a bit more grainy because they are older the scent will definitely start to go they'll look cosmetically different but um Again, it's up to you guys. Look, putting an old product on isn't going to cause you any harm. It's just not going to be doing as much for your beard or your face as something that's fresh would be doing. So also be conscious of that when you're purchasing things. We don't put dates on them. Some guys do, but I don't know many brands that do. I've had this debate with someone. Once we make these, we put the lid on them and we shut them and they stay, they stay shut and sealed. So it's once they are released to the air after they've set. I would say the 12 months really is, a, is an area from that point. So guys, that is my video on butters, how I like, why I like them, what they're about, the various different sorts, when to use them and how to use them. Um, I hope this has been a good one. I hope this answers some questions because it's something I've been asked a lot of stuff about. I'll get my thinking hat on. I'll think of the next video as always. It's been great. Back to my coffee, back to work. Have a good weekend, everyone. Stay bearded, stay safe and see you at the next video. But don't forget to like and subscribe.